Welcome to another episode of Ladies Talking Business. On this show, we break down the concept of business to its simplest form. I am Moremi Akko. Our guest today is an experienced business and finance coach and an award-winning serial entrepreneur. From paying her way through school with Omega 3000 Naira she was earning as an office assistant, she has since evolved into the CEO of a multi-million Naira business as a telecoms distribution company under her company Agunanti Nigeria Limited, founded 14 years ago. It is a leading dealer with the top three telecommunications companies in Nigeria. She was recently awarded the Business Coach of the Year 2020 by the Entrepreneur Award, TEA. She is also a recipient of the MTN Award as the Best Sub-Trade Partner, STP of the Year 2012, and was recently featured as the 10 Wealth and Finance Experts to Watch Out For in 2021 by Yahoo Finance. She is Nancy Nadi. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Nancy. Thank you so much. So I can't wait to hear your story. So from starting with 3,000 Naira, um, the whole process into entrepreneurship, the determination, just give me the quick highlights of your time till now. Okay, so I, I, I grew up from a very poor background. So a poor background, we were about 13 people living in a room. So it was that bad. But the good thing about it is that my mom brought us up in love. So growing up, we've had a lot of challenges. So I've looked at it that I'm going to be wealthy someday, even though yeah. I know where I'm coming from. So I, when, I, when I was in the IA um, Secondary School, which is SSC, SSC, SSC yeah. I lost my dad. So I knew that going to higher institution is, is, is not going to be possible for that period because I know what is happening in the family. So and my mom called us to a meeting and said, everyone, that she needs us to understand that everybody needs to have school, school cert certificate. That as we get to SS3 and we're out, we should just relax for other people to also get to that, get to that, to that stage. stage. So that from there we can actually forge ahead in future if we want to. But anyone that stopped below there, it will be difficult. So mm. we all understood. So as my other sisters, everybody keep getting to that place, they decide to find what to do. So when I, when I came out of secondary school, I decided to go and look for a job. I was 19 at that time. I left secondary school at 18, but I was 19. So I was looking for a job. I got a job as office assistant to earn 3,000 Naira. So when I started the job, my boss kept lamenting that he was not making profit. It was a call, a call center that was not making profit. So I told him, let, let me manage the call center. He was like, okay. So they put me at the call center and took somebody else to the computer section where I was. So on the first day, I stood, I managed that particular call center. We made 100,000 euros. Wow. And my boss was like, before now, they were making 20, 30, and they were, not, they, were, they were actually running on loss. But with that, they made profit. I don't know how much profit they made, but I know they made profit. So that continued. So the second day, my boss gave me 500 naira and said, you, you, and he will be giving me 500 naira if I continue to make the kind of sales. So, and the sales was coming like that. I was giving, he will, be, he will give me 500 naira. When I get home, I will give it to my younger sister. She will take it to the bank. I, was, I just put an account with First Bank at that time. We give it to them. They will go and lodge it into the bank for me. I, I keep every day I was giving. And I realized that because there was nothing distracting me at that time, most often all my colleagues would have closed. I would tell my boss not to bother. I was still to 10, 9, working because I realized people were coming to, to buy. So I was doing that. My boss liked what I was doing. So he would give me 500 naira every day. Sometimes he would give me more. He would just keep giving me. And as he was giving me, my mind was to go back to school. So I never spent a dime from the money I was getting. Even my salary, I didn't spend anything from it. So what I would do is, once I get my pay, I would send my younger sister to the bank, lodge it there for me. I keep doing that. Six months later, I just went to the bank to check my balance, and I saw 101,000. I was like, wow. wow. I have 101,000. At 19? I was 19 at that time. Wow. So I was like, wow. I have... And I said, I don't know what came over me, and I said, I won't tell anyone, because... I have experienced a lot in my home. Nepa, nep, paying Nepa bill is, is cry and tears. Paying house rent, even though it's one room, is a lot of tears, challenges everywhere. So I said, I won't tell anybody. I need to go back to school. So I went to, I, I wrote jam. Okay. The jam came out and I, I, I got below 200. And a year before, I had admission, but I didn't have money to go. Mm. So from there, I, I got below 200. So they, they didn't give me admission. So I cried. And on my way home, I saw... 
Legal, uh, I saw Delta State University, Abraka, executive part time. So I went in, made an inquiry, and they said it was 25000 at that time. It was expensive at that time. My mom was like, it's too much. But they don't understand that I already you have four money. years in my account. So hmm. I did that. I took the form. I started. And I, as I was working, I was going to school. So I would go to school from, I would go to work from eight to six, and I would go to school from six to nine for five years. I wow. continued. So when and you continued, I, sorry, you continued managing that same. Um, call I was still center. working with my boss. Okay. So I would go there, do my work. When I close by six, I will not go to the school. But at the time, because I needed more time to focus on school, I had to leave that job and and look for another job at that time. So that went then. When I finished my school, I got married and I I went to telecom business, and that was where God actually blessed me, and. Um, so when I, when I went into telecom business, because I have learned a lot from the failed business, I've learned a lot from my mom, because she keeps starting all over again. Mm. She will start business today, all your finances will be gone, she will start next week, they will keep getting money, and she was not bad. She was prudent. But the challenge was, with the kids, we're eating up eating the... <laughs> we're eating up the... Profit. We're eating up the... Both the profit, profit and the capital. And the capital yeah. So we're eating it up. So I learned a lot to realize that as business owners, a lot, of, a lot of them, and I meet a lot of people today, they are still doing the same thing. They get fund, they get loan, they eat it up. They get capital, is eating up. And they keep thinking, I'm not bad. You are not bad, but there's something, there's something wrong, wrong with wrong. your finances. You are not managing it the right way. So when I started business, <laughs> the first day, I... I, I actually learned from my experience and my mom's own. So I went out to do research, apart from the Wonder Field, which I'll talk about which later. I, yes, I would even I'll ask you about, about that Wonder Field. Yeah. So I'm talking about the one that succeed now. So on the first day, I went out to research about the business. I just told my husband, I want to resign. I need to start business for myself. And he said, why? I just gave him reason. So I agreed. I went out to do market research. When I got there, I saw my... I, at that time, I understood what target market was because of some experience I have in the past. I don't want because I'm looking at time now. So some experience we had in the past, the experience was that there was a certain day we were very hungry. There was no food in the house. And my mom was like, ah, there's nothing we, we, we will do. I looked at it. I told my mom, can't we go and watch for, let's go and wash other clothes. people's clothes. And they will give us money. My mom said it's a good idea. So she took me, both of us went all, all around our environment. Nobody was ready to pay us to wash for them. Why? We went to the wrong audience. We went to people like us that are hungry. They don't have money. We are going to them. If somebody that have not eaten, we will tell you, don't worry, I will wash my clothes. That is, because it's not a challenge. So I knew that, that going to the wrong audience, you will never make sales. Mm. But when you go to the right audience, you will make sales. It will, it will just look as if there is something this, different mm. about what you are doing. So that's targeted audience. Targeted audience, understanding mm. them. So when I started, I went into the market. I looked at those people that, that are my target audience. Mm. So when I picked them, I went to them one after the other. started asking them questions. Where, where are you buying from? Why are you buying from them? Okay, where, why are you not buying from this particular person? Because they will say, I don't buy from this for X, Y, Z reason. I buy from this for X, Y, Z. So I said, why do you buy from this? But they will tell me, I will write it down. They will tell me why they are not buying from someone. I will write it down. And I will ask them questions like, what do you want to see that these people are not doing? They also told me, I, I have about six answers that I needed to solve. So I took it back home. Look at it critically and say, can I solve this thing? Mm -hmm. And I knew in my head that if I solve these six challenges i'm going to win in this industry so i went back i looked for ways to solve it because some of it was like money issue which i know it is a lot of work for me to be able to do it so i went back i, I don't want money to print and build you know, now we have online, online marketing yeah. so we are at advantage now mm -hmm. then it was traditional marketing so i took a plain paper started writing out all what i wanted to do Something I would have printed on hand bills because there was no money. I had to use my hand. So I now went back to give it to every one of them. I'll go all out telling them. And another thing I want to say at this point is that a lot of people start business without... They just start business without creating awareness. So you if you don't create awareness them. for business, how will people know you are there? How will they know you exist? Do you think once I open my door and I'm stepping out, I'm looking for a shop to buy something? No. But you need to be intentional about creating awareness. So that awareness helped me a lot. And when you also create awareness, there should be space between when you are creating awareness and when you are going to launch out. Mm. 
Mm. Give them time to know you, to understand what you are doing. Even during those periods, we learn a lot of things to do that will help your business grow. So when they told me some of those things, I quickly implemented. When I went out to start giving them flyers, they said, I'm going to start March 30, I'm going to start March 20th. They were like, okay, if you are going to start, then what's new about you starting? There's a lot, there, there are a lot of people, people selling. It, yeah. I started thinking, like, what can I do more? So I went back, I realized, I realized that sometimes to, to make people buy into what you have, is it that you give them freebies or you give them something to attract them so i quickly went back to say who are your who are your audience who are your target market are they the, the rich or the people below the pyramid if there are people below the pyramid there is a certain gift that you can give them that will make them buy into what you're selling but if they are the rich there is a certain thing you can act also make available with your product that will make them come so they are two different mm. people so these ones my target audience are people below the pyramid so i said okay i'm going to add there will be a lot of drink and food on that first day. As, as something catchy. Catchy to them. So I put it there. So I now went back to start distributing. Everybody was just taking. Okay, there's a, there'll be snacks. There'll be, I say yes. As they, and they, have, they saw the prizes too. They saw the challenges that I said I'm going to solve. So they just, they will take it and put it in their waste spots and say I'll be there. So immediately I started giving it to them and they were embracing it. I knew I'm going to make sales already. So <laughs> I've not sold. The day has not come, but I am but just sure. Knew. Okay, so, that's it. You will tell us more about this after the break, okay? <laughs> Okay, more business conversations coming up with our guest right after the break. Thanks for staying with us. You are watching Ladies Talking Business on Plus TV Africa with our guest, Nancy Nadi, a business and finance coach. Okay, Nancy, talking about that business that failed, yeah. I really want to know. So briefly tell us about the business and the lessons you learned from it failing. Okay, the business is about selling charakap to superstores and to resellers or wholesalers. So, mm. what happened was one of the first things that I learned from it is that never start a business from your area of weakness. That's from your own personal area of weakness. So, I started that business thinking, oh, I'll be able to do it. But I realized that the major people that buy from that kind of business is they buy on credit and mm. you need to pay later. And I am not good at following up with, with credit. Mm. And so it's, not, it's actually not good for me. So, but if I am going to do it at all, I, will be, I, should need, I need to craft it out in a way that credit sales will not be involved. So okay. that is why that business actually failed. I gave a lot of people goods and I could not collect any, any money at all. And another thing is, don't ever, don't, if, if you have not... Um, and done research with the audience or with the, with the target or the people that need the product and show what they need. Don't just go and produce product because it's beautiful. Do people really need it? Need it. Will they buy it? Because I made those products look beautiful, shaka, packaged well, but do people really need it? So you must know before you venture into any business, is it a need? Will people buy it? Right. Are they desperately in need of it? Because if you start a business that is a need, definitely you are already on the path mm. to success. Mm. So those are the two things I can tell you that. Okay. So when you now started this new business in the telecom space, yes. what did you start doing differently? Okay, now, number one, one of the things I started doing differently was first to, I communicate a lot. Communication is powerful. And I take feedback from the market as I sell. I take feedback a lot. So I'll give you some clear examples. So when I started, like I told you, I went out to do the research. I gave them flyers. So they came on the first day. We made sales of over 1.8 million. And for me, that's encouragement. So I tell my clients that if you start business and you can start making progress from the day one, you know there is future in it. So you will put in more to achieve more. So after making that, as they keep coming and we are giving them the gifts, before we give you any gift, we'll get your contact number. Okay. Your number, we don't even need your address, just your phone number. So we're building a database. Building a database. So as we're building those database, they helped us the next morning we would just send SMS out. So we have like a, um, we would have systemized it, put it. But I, I also understand that you need to consistently create sales message or marketing message that your customers want to hear. It's not enough to, you guys see a lot of people just broadcast message. And I will tell you, when you do those broadcasts, do you get any sales? Mm -hmm. But there is something you must put in your message that once it is being broadcast, no matter what, people will respond back. That is the message that is working or that is eating it. Adam, is you have said something that your target audience 
need they are desperately in need of so once once we once we send our message out in the morning we get a lot of people flowing into our store coming to buy from us so we send message and if, if at any time i send message in the morning there is no sales expect another one in the afternoon <laughs> so you have to be consistent yeah. about it and if mm. i don't make this i will send another one in the evening I'm, I'm, I'm like that but i realize as i begin to do this i get more better at it and once i send my message out i get another thing is you have to be very sensitive very sensitive in your industry, in your the trend that happened. So I remember I went somewhere. They were not actually talking to me. They were talking to like the manager of that organization was talking to a colleague there. But I, I am a, I came to, I went there. They are my vendors. I went to pick product there. So I was sitting there and I can just I did, I was not even listening to their conversation. But they said something that interests me. Like a certain product will not be available in the next few months. That because they have issue producing it. So as a business owner, you must pay attention mm. to opportunities around. Really Literally, cool. I heard that. I quickly called my office back to say, how much do you have on ground? <laughs> they said they have X, Y, Z. I said, okay, move everything to these people. I moved it in. Then I now went to tell them that I've paid for X, Y, Z quantity of this. Summer. They were like, we don't, that's all we have. I said, well, I've paid. Mm. And they gave it to me. Before I knew it, two days later, they, that product was not in town. They don't, nobody had it. Wow. So, and I started calling them to say, okay, what's the current price of this particular product? And that was how I made it big in that particular thing. And you must constantly review your numbers, check your books, know what is going on in your business. If you are not making sales today, it's not because, it's not because, it's not, it's, the reason you are not making sales, you have to find out what happened today that made me not to make, make sales. sales. So, there is this quote I crafted out of frustration that there is no, but there is no such thing as no sales if you are not selling someone else is hmm. so i'll stay in my store i'm like there's no sales i will just say, let me drive out i'll see my colleague making so much sales i was like ah, what, what did they do what? so I will, so it made me to always ask the why question what are you doing so i realized okay the person is actually is that the person created a strategy or did something because i remember one of the telcos gave us a um, a target to achieve hmm. so i i took that target i broke it down into my stones weekly daily how much am i supposed to sell to meet this number so the first day i didn't meet it but because i have those numbers with me i could not sleep i was like how will i meet this how, how am i going to meet this number so the uh, the next day an idea dropped in my mind when you get to your store get a carton of malt just some of the things you want to give to drive your sales are just something not Very really big petty. Tiny, something mm. small so i i got the the motor guinness i loaded it in my in my fridge in the store and i started sending a message out to my client that bring one customer and we are here to entertain you with chilled malt do you know we crushed <laughs> our sales for just that little thing? just malt <laughs> okay so you've been giving us business advice and you know all sorts of which we are grateful for okay. but then again how would you advise a small business owner to run their business diligently in nigeria very quickly okay so talking about running your business a lot of Small business in Nigeria start their business from survival mode. I want mm. to survive. I want to take care of my family. And because of that, most of them are not seeing the whole opportunity in that business. I keep telling people, your business, you, can build a, you can build a wealthy business. If you can put some things in place, number one, separate yourself from your business. A lot of people will come to say, I need loan, I need fund. You realize that. I keep asking them, are you the one that need the fund or your business? business. Because mm. sometimes when you pump in fund into the business, before you know it, all the fund has gone back to personal use. So you must separate yourself from your business, number one. Number okay. two, set financial goals. A lot of people don't set financial goals. Some people set goals, but they don't set financial goals. The reason why you need to set financial goals is that it will drive you to achieve it. I remember when I, when I had... Um, a certain target to meet in a particular network and they gave me I never knew I could ever do that number I never knew but immediately I set those goals I broke it down into my stones I started chasing it then I said I called people I gave people more targets to come and people started buying Bef at the, before the end of that particular program I was doing times four of what I would naturally do so with that I learned how to set financial goals for myself not for any network Mm. Because I'm do, I want to make the money for myself. So most business owners, they don't see their business being big. Mm. I, I even confront people. I'll say, this business you are doing, no matter how bad, no matter how small it is, what, are you, what, are, what, what can you see? Do you see it in the next few years that it will be a multi-million? Uh, if you cannot see it, you can't even get there. So mm. you must try to see ahead. 
then put those necessary things in place. Number one, separate yourself from your business. Yeah. Have understand numbers. Numbers you don't need to you don't need to know too much accounting. Just know mm, the basis. The basis. Yeah. Because without that, your business will you know you can you can't move. Because you need to understand numbers, you need to know how to put those things in place. Check your books, mm. check check what is happening, understand your cost from your profit. A lot of people that even that run business from survival mode, they spend both the capital and, and the, the profit. Profits. But if you can know how to calculate your profit, I tell you, even though you are not making, you are not retaining profit, then you should just be spending profit. Okay, maybe you make under 10,000, for instance, and you spend 20,000. You are spent from your capital already. already yeah. But if you make 10,000 and you know your profit is actually 10,000 and you spent it, it's even still better than someone that is just spending at mm -hmm. random. Okay which mm. is what most business do. So, like I told you about my mom, that's one of the reasons why I keep screaming, a lot of people need to put structure in place and ensure their business is well structured because if you don't have those things in place, you keep starting all over again. Mm. The banks can give grants to everybody and you realize nobody, none of them comes up because they've not separated themselves from their business. Mm. They don't understand the basis of business finance. Okay, Nancy, they, <laughs> we will talk more about this after the break. <laughs> We will go on a short break. Please stay with us. I'm still here with Nancy Nandi, a businesswoman and business coach. Um, so we're talking about structures. Yes. Um, and as a strong advocate for business structures, in your own opinion, what basic structures do you even think every small business should have? Okay. So... Talking about structure, look, well, basically, this, this basic one, they should have, like, sales process. Okay. A lot of people don't even have, they don't have consistent sales process. Today, you can, they can come from this way. Next week, is from the other way. You can have a consistent, consistent sales process. I have a process. If you, if, even though you have two employees, let there be contract. On, let them know the do's and do's. Have mm. staff handbook. Have, a lot of people see these things as they are, being, they, they are cumbersome, but they are not. And you, a lot of you see a lot of businesses, especially small business owners, they don't have consistency in the quality or in the production process. For instance, let me use like a bakery. You order a bread today, the bread is looking so fresh. Tomorrow, you order bread is looking as if it didn't, it didn't rise well. Mm -hmm. So if they, have, if they have SOP in place, they have that procedure, well, it's, a lot of them have the process, they have, the, they have it in their head. But because it's not documented properly, they will always have issues. Mm. So, if they can have some of these little, little things, let them have it there. So, having this, having sales process in place, mm. having hiring process in place, having financial s structure in place. Because the truth is, apart from all of us want sales as business owner, but the backbone of your sales, what will make your sales even look, um, what will make people feel that, okay, you've had the sales is when you can... When you can be on top of, of your finances, but having solid financial structure in place. And having financial structure in place, simple, you can get a software. If you don't have capacity to get an accountant yet, you can mm. get a software. And you can get people to help you put some of these things in place. But also, don't look at it that, oh, a lot of people think I have to structure my business until I'm big. Then I always ask you that, do you want to remain small? Because you have to manage well to grow big, not growing big to manage, manage well. So well. Mm. first, you have to start putting some of these things in place. Then you can start attracting the right funding. And the thing I say is a lot of people can get funding from bank. A lot of banks as issue giving loans to people and you won't even see it. People won't pay back. Because mm. if you don't have the right structure in place, number two, the CEO don't pay himself. It's also a part, it's part of structure. Some of them don't pay themselves. Some of them don't even know what to pay themselves. You don't know what to pay. You don't know how to arrive at, okay, what will I pay myself? I'm the owner. But the truth is, you are the owner of the business, but you are not the business. And until you understand that, you need to separate yourself from the business. You can't go the way the business is ought to go. Because everything you'll be doing is, okay, I need to, I need to get anything. You get it from the business. You, you can't run a business like that. There's no business that is really doing well that is being run like that. Mm. So for you to actually grow and have people to even... And, I, and at the time, as you begin to even grow as a small business, because I remember I started alone. I was doing everything. At the time, I needed to bring people in. I brought two people. Later, we became 26. And all, as oh, you wow. begin to grow, you must understand that you need people to help you to bait your vision, to make it bigger. And you can't for do it, everything alone. And I, I, like, I would like to say... Wealth is eating from those that want to do it all by themselves. 
Okay, Nancy, let's um, very quickly, because we're running out of time, let's talk about um, something quite interesting. Yeah. Well, how would you advise small businesses to run their business without um, succumbing to corruption? You know, um, in this part of the world, to be sincere, it's very difficult. It's not easy because most often some of the information you need, they are not available they are not readily available. You need to go and search for it. Mm. And so they are, not readily they, are not, they are not readily available. So you need to search for it. Some of them, you can even be a victim of it before you now know that it's needed for the industry mm -hmm. based on the environment. But mm -hmm. the truth is, whatever you know is needed in your, in your industry to exist as a, as a business, do it ahead of time. Because when you delay in doing those things, it is what leads to corruption somehow. From, from my own experience. So if you have done, okay, you need to pay maybe a certain bill to government for whatever in your industry. Can you pay on time? Can you pay? You don't let them bring the bill before you start negotiating. But most times, because these things are not, like you said, readily available, you mm. won't even know that you're meant to pay this charge or that charge mm. until they just hit you with a bill. That's that. So you're either forced to pay or cut corners or, or, or just or, or, or take the punishment so yeah so that, that i said that earlier but as we be information has so much out there now that if you want to start business there are some little basics that you should you know should about know. you can ask business coaches you can ask people okay for this industry i'm going into this industry what license do i really need mm -hmm. what do i need so do them ahead so that you can avoid some of this issue like me i i would just go in january i know what i'm supposed to pay and i'm like just pay 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 they know me in, my, in the area where I am. I'll pay it ahead because I don't even want you to come and give me stress. So it makes it easy for you. Even just, for instance, during those days that we use normal um, electricity that we have to pay, we have to uh, pay based on the bills that is. But you realize that whenever they come to cut your like or disconnect, you, have, you need to bribe or do all of that. But the truth is, if you have paid ahead of time, you won't have issues. Yeah, have but most often too is that they gave us maybe wrong bill that we are still saying is not supposed to be so and all mm -hmm. that. There's a lot of complication, but you can still find a way around it. And also, the second suggestion I'll give people is you can transfer some of these things to professionals to undo for you. Undo. Okay. So I want to do, I want to file in my maybe tax or I give it to a professional that understands the whole thing. So he knows when he's supposed to go and file. He knows when he's supposed to do the thing. So mm -hmm. I'm not under any stress. stress yeah. So that's another option. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Nancy. Thank you. And thank you for these business tips. Thank we you. have learned a thing thank or two. Thank I you. wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thanks for watching this episode of Ladies Talking Business. Do join us the same time next week for another episode. Don't forget to follow us on Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube to catch up with our programs. I'm Moremi Akonwo. Bye for now.